not all the talent on our show is in front of the cameras. It takes a lot of behind the scenes people to get us on the air. Now, people like our own Lloyd Wells. And in addition to arranging all the music for the park shows, Lloyd also channels the creative energies of our uh, fantastic musicians here at Opryland on stage. And Janet Tyson was able to get him to slow down just long enough to find out more about his demanding job. This stack of envelopes is just a portion of the musical arrangements used on Opryland on stage. And one envelope contains all the music for just one show. Now this massive responsibility is just part of Lloyd Wells' job. What is involved in arranging a song? Okay, for, uh, I'll have to speak for our certain situation here. Uh, working with two directors mostly. Uh, they're responsible for two of the biggest, understand it's for the biggest shows I'm talking about. They're responsible for two shows apiece, one of them for I Hear America Singing and, and the country show maybe, or for me and my gal and, and showboat. And the process goes all the year and those directors will watch their shows during the year and monitor and, and decide what tunes are not working or are working or what needs to be taken out and changed for the following year and they'll make, they'll listen to thousands of albums of current show things or, or anything that'd be pertinent to that show. And the usual way we work here is they decide on a, on a song from a particular album, and that involves the style of the song. Uh, and they'll bring me a, a tape of that, and we'll discuss the length, whatever. So when they're searching for a song, they're, all, they're also looking for a style and everything that goes on with it. And the majority of it then is transcription from a record. Sometimes we will choose a song that's so old until there's not a current record of it, and I'll do a straight-ahead arrangement of that from the ground up but the majority of it is, is done from listening to records and deciding what they want. What do you have to understand about music to be able to uh, make a chart from listening to a record? Well, to, to transcribe from a record is a, is a depends on the, the quality of your ability to hear, you know, uh, and I'm, I'm not speaking about just audible sounds, but the pitch relations and so forth. Some, some people are capable of sitting down and listening to a record and, and taking off what everything on there is, the vocal lines, the string lines, the horn lines, what the percussion player is playing and all that, and I can do that to a certain degree. Uh, then a problem that arises from that is if, take for instance the showboat band, which is nine, nine pieces, two trumpets, trombone, two reeds, and a rhythm section. And if I brought a record that has 60 string players and five trumpets and four trombones and all that, it has to be cut down and adjusted. It also has to be adjusted in terms of the particular aura that surrounds that show. We cannot put something in showboat that, that would fit in another, you know, we can't have a string section in showboat. We don't have it. We have a nine-piece band, so it's got, to, it's got to fit that era, that ilk. One of the shows that you've been working on with live entertainment is Opryland on stage. Uh, describe what you do for that show and, and how much that has required of you. Life's blood is what it's required. I've never known of anything, never been involved in anything that has produced that quantity of music in the, in the time that we have. It's an unbelievable amount of stuff going on day to day. Uh, presently, the day-to-day the -day situation is we have a host and a co-host, as you know. They each have a solo and they have a duet. And then we have four guests each day on the show and each one of those people have two songs so we're dealing with 11 songs per day and it, it turns out to be that amongst the folks that have to work with that it's about three hours per tune so you, you know you're dealing with 33 hours a day just before it ever gets down to the studio to get it prepared to go in down there now with composers they kind of get their they get their thrill out of the creation of a musical score and, and the singers or musicians get their thrill by performing it and making that music come alive. What, uh, what's your reward? Where does your thrill in, this, in the musical process come? Probably in the, in the finished product. There's, uh, there's a certain amount of thrill to, to writing, just to sit, to sit and write and listen, you know, mentally listen to what you're writing, but it never quite comes across until you hear it done, you know, till it's been rehearsed and uh, all put together. The thrill's there just as much as it is with the performers or the musicians. Yeah. Next up, we're going to talk...